All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Tuesday 10X. Uh, this is the Mortgage 10X interview. Uh, this one's a little bit different because, uh, well, Kristen Messerly is the special guest and I am going to be interviewing her. Uh, her and I are both speaking at um, Momentum Builder in Las Vegas on Thursday. Uh, it's not too late. There's still tickets. You can still like get to Vegas from anywhere. Pretty low cost, cool venue. So feel free to sign up. But we're both going to be speaking. And Sean Herrero is going to be on the same. Like we have I don't know, it's separate presentations, but it's like an hour block. And uh, Sean was going to be here, but he's on his way to the airport. But Krista and I are going to do something a little bit different. You know, we're going to kind of share our presentation from stage. And we're we're going to have a conversation about being obsessed with impact. Krista, anything you want to say before we get started to kind of frame the conversation here? Um, no, just that, yeah, we're while we're sharing some of the presentation, it's collaborative and would love to hear everybody's response and thoughts on this as we go through it. All right. So you're going to see actual slides. Now, again, this is not a replacement for what we're going to do on stage. We're, we've left a few things out, but 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 this is the title of the presentation: "Obsessed with Impact." And this this all started for me when I interviewed Jeremy Forcier, uh, middle of December. It was called Separation Season, and he said, "My two words this year are going to be obsessed and impact." And I'm just bro stealing that. Um, and I, and and Kristen and I stole it really good. Like not only did we both go with this, but we got the domain. So Jeremy, if you're listening to this, we got obsessedwithimpact.com. We own it. It's ours. But thank you for the inspiration. And and we are going to do a podcast uh, together. That so stay tuned for that, guys. Coming soon. So as I started thinking about obsessed with impact, you know what I realized that it's not my theme of the year. It's the theme of my career. And, 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 and when I came up with this slogan as a loan officer, this is before mortgage coach, and I was just trying to be a top producing loan officer. And I did become one of the top 50 loan officers in America. Um, but it all started right here. Like I had realized that as a loan officer, that if I went beyond the fee worksheet and delivered some content that showed people how to really optimize you know, their mortgage and really build financial freedom by strategically making the best decision. Like I'd kill it. Like if I could say my advice makes a difference um, and then really deliver something unique and valuable, like I'd win. And that was driven by obsessed with impact. Uh, you know, today, who cares that I was a loan officer once upon a time, but I, I have interviewed for over a decade, the best loan officers in America. And, and something that I have seen over and over and over that all the best of the best, they're obsessed with impact. Like that is just what delineates the best from the rest. So um, I'm gonna share some of the things that I think are most important uh, this year uh, from all the interviews that I do. But uh, Kristen, I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, your obsessed with impact story and then we'll, we'll get into the content. Yeah, so I, of course, I was kind of born into the mortgage industry. Both my parents worked in mortgage. My dad was building a mortgage company as I was when I was young, um, and I tried not to get into the mortgage industry. But I uh, became a social worker when I started out my career, and just found that there was such a huge need for financial literacy education, and I wanted to have a bigger impact. So this is kind of where my obsessed with impact was born. Um, I worked primarily with homeless youth and was um, in the immigrant communities and just saw so much need. So I wanted, I founded a company called Cultural Outreach, where we created a lot of educational content and other strategies. Um, I've surveyed over 6,000 millennial and Gen Z consumers at this point. And, um, and I, I've done that for the last 10 years or so. Um, and so, you know, now starting First Home IQ, we are really focused on how can we take this to the next level. Um, and so I'm going to be sharing, of course, my obsession with impact, um, some of the strategies that I've learned through my career and how we can apply that to the mortgage industry today. Yeah. And make sure you check this out, guys. We'll put a link down below to kristenmesserly.com. This is you know, the homepage of her website. Uh, notice there's a little button here for speaking. She is fired up to be on lots of stages in the mortgage industry this year. Uh, you know, her research is amazing. 
And then of course we got a link to First Home IQ. So let's let's get into some of the stuff that we want to share. Great. Yeah. Um, this is just a link to the, you can go to nextgenhomebuyer.com where you can see our most recent uh, report, which is all really um, insightful for First Home IQ and how we're developing education content for the next generation. Um, and we also did a financial literacy research project starting last September that you can find on our website. We'll talk more about this as we go, but it's uh, you can find out what your quiz, um, it's a quiz that's measuring your understanding of buying your first home. And so you can actually take that quiz today and it's a big part of uh, First Home IQ that we'll talk about a little bit later. Hey, hey, Kristen, by the way, is this, did I get this right? I, I was I was distracted by that because actually that link doesn't work right now. <laughs> so, so. so if you go to firsthomeiq.com slash Dave Savage, you can take your quiz, but Kristen Messerly is not ready yet. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe by Thursday we can get it ready. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so put in my name guys right there and I get credits for anybody that takes tests and be sure to share those. Like we, our goal here is to help grow everyone's obsession with impact, you know, and to, to go deeper in how we create impact. And, and one of the, one of the, the things that I've reflected on and that I believe to my core, after all these interviews that I've done, after looking at the demographics in the marketplace today, after looking at the, you know, the challenges we have in America, you know, the affordability crisis, the, the financial literacy crisis is, and this is my advice to everyone listening to this, everyone watching this, if you can win with first time home buyers, you can win with everyone. You know, like like if you can completely help a first time home buyer gain clarity and confidence, you can do that with a move up buyer. You can do that with a debt console buyer. You can do that with everyone. So like this is this is the focus that I'm going to push our community towards this year and and every loan officer and every realtor should have a first home um you know, first home buyer strategy. Even if you're a real estate agent that specializes in the high end, all those people, they have equity, they have kids, some of them have grandkids, and and they 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 can help first time home buyers. So so this is one of the 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 charts on let's just call it the you know the biggest one of the biggest challenges in America is you know the home ownership rates in America. And and getting more um, under 35, you know, uh, first home IQ is focused on under 25. Uh, the the Gen Z. Anything you want to comment here, Kristen? Well, just the fact that I mean, we, we our focus. We've designed everything for that under 25. Um, but a lot of our ambassadors using our education content are using this with first time home buyers, and and all of my friends who are first time home buyers have gone through the content and found it super useful. So just to say, um, you know, that's that is the focus is to increase the home ownership rate there, and and we have a lot of education content to support that. Love that. And and so right right now, this is as of today in America, you know, this is the target age at when millennials are are getting into home ownership. Of course, our goal is to move this little circle downhill. And and that's the mission. Uh one of the one of the kind of new challenges that Gen Z has, in addition to increased affordability challenges, is just the confusing media, you know. Josh Altman is the second most followed realtor in America. Uh, almost a million people follow him on Instagram. This is actually a, a screenshot of, um, or actually there, there's a video on Instagram where Fox News was interviewing him about home ownership and, you know, is now a good time to buy. And he actually said, hey, it's not a bad time to rent. It's okay, especially in California. The tenant lars are strong maybe it's not a bad idea to be a renter in a market like this. And we're like, we believe that's that's not great leadership. That's not good advice. Uh, Josh is a great dude. So I'm, I'm sure with reflection, he can even see that, you know, when you look at the wealth gap in America, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with who owns in America and who rents in America. So telling people like, hey, it's it's not that bad. Put it off. Like that's just not, a data-driven perspective. Anything you want to add here, Kristen? Just that I super understand that mentality. And I think it's important that we have a lot of empathy towards that. I mean, people are in, in especially markets like where I live in Los Angeles, it, it feels, for a lot of people, it is completely out of reach. But 
for uh, there are opportunities, of course, for us to get into the market. And when I thought that I was not going to be able to buy and I got a mortgage coach rent versus own, it like, you know, really changed my perspective. And I'm so grateful that I entered the market to become part of that. And it, it significantly raised, of course, my um, net well, uh, net worth. And I think that's something that we need to educate people with real numbers to be able to see here's the opportunity versus people feeling very hopeless around that topic. Yeah. And, and then guys, here's, here's more news. This was in December. Uh, the New York times has a podcast called the daily and they had an episode called, should you rent or buy the new math? And, and guys, this is cut and paste from the transcript. Most for most people, the answer is yes. You should give up and you shouldn't feel bad about it. Renting has an unfair stigma in this country. Guys, that is not a data-driven perspective. Uh, that same podcast went on to say, you know what? You're throwing away money faster when you buy than when you rent. And and they called out, you know, paying the real estate agent commission is throwing away money. They packaged paying interest is throwing away money. They packaged and presented home repairs is throwing away money. And then the, you know, the worst and most confusing information of all is they they actually revalidated this concept that you need 20% to buy a home. You know, most people don't put 20% down that are first time home buyers. So again, a tremendous amount of confusing news that's not data driven, you know, that's not good leadership. Uh, you know, we we believe that when you help someone make a confident decision around home ownership, you need to look at the data and then you need to think beyond today. You know, like every time a first time home buyer is thinking about, should I get in buy a home or not? Yeah, show them the numbers today. How does your monthly payment compare to rent? But show them what that might look like in five years based on the data and based off their personal assumptions. You know, there's a, a rise of this, you know, the, the rise of the forever renters. And, and we want to turn this around. Like that's what we're all about is, is, is changing the narrative and moving things back. Kristen, anything you want to share? Um, just that, you know, as we're seeing media like that, it's not just there, it's not just in the national media, it's in our Instagram and TikTok feeds. I mean, there's constantly memes about how homeownership is out of reach and what a joke that is. And I, I think it's important that we, again, have empathy for the consumer understanding that they are inundated with these kinds of messages. Um, and we can do something about that. You know, we need to do something about that. So I'll share a few slides from our um, next gen home buyer report that kind of um, talk a little bit more about that problem. And, and we see here as my um, computer is loading that over half, I believe it is that, um, yeah, say that they, well, around half say that they're confident in their knowledge of home buying. And, you know, whenever we did that financial literacy re research project last year, we saw that they, there's specific huge issues like Dave was talking about around down payment and, um, and understanding what programs are available to them to make affordability possible. So for instance, uh, one of the stats was that 70% thought you needed 10 or 20% down to buy a home. So, you know, while there is an affordability crisis, there's also a crisis of financial literacy that is preventing people from accessing homeownership when it would have been possible. Um, so this is, a, you know, the first home IQ score that we mentioned. Again, do not go to firsthomeiq.com slash Kristen Messerly. Go to Dave Savage. That's in the chat. Um, but that is uh, where we're looking at the... Um, the understanding of buying your first home, the average score, we've had over a thousand people take this quiz at this point um, is 57%. And of course that's lower when you get into Gen Z. Would love for everybody on this call to take this quiz. We are gonna be making some slight adjustments to this. We think it's a great, it's 25 questions. So it's, it's pretty robust, um, but it's a great way to really start the conversation with people and see what they feel that they don't know and help people understand, you know, there's, you may lack confidence here, but you can guide them through this process. And here's some knowledge that helps you, you know, it, it gives you the answers at the end. It'll help educate them in that process. So, so anything you want to add to that, Dave? Yeah, yeah. Couple, couple things. So, you know, most of the people in the industry that have taken this, 
I've heard a, a few people get 100%. I've heard most of them in the 90%, 80%. Um, but this is something like if you are obsessed with impact and you're in mortgage or you're in housing, you're you're a real estate agent, someone who's truly obsessed with impact is going to want to get this test in the hands of the most people possible. You know, they're like, like that is, there, there's the concept and hey, I'm obsessed with impact and 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 this is how I do business. To me, if you are in housing, we've got to get education to the next generation. And and this this is the habit that a, a person, an originator who's obsessed with impact, they're going to give this to every single renter that they do a prequal for. Like if someone's renting and you run a credit report and you qualify them and you did not give them this link, you did not give them this report, you're not living obsessed with impact. Uh, mortgage practices. So just make sure that you guys integrate this. Um, it's free to the industry. While there is an ambassador program that we'll tell you guys about where people are donating money to this nonprofit cause. Um, everyone on this call, you have access to this link and you can share this with as many people as you want. We want and you to share this with as many people. And we're going to talk about some really practical ways that you can uh, use, you know, being obsessed with impact to generate business. But I think it's really important to understand why this, you know, why we need to be impact focused. And one of the big areas that we've been talking about here is that uh, people that one of the big areas is that people feel this is out of reach over half say that they don't feel confident that homeownership is going to be accessible to the next generation completely inaccessible. I mean, I think that's just, you know, and there's, there's a feeling of instability in the market. Um, again, this is from research that happened just last month. And I think it's, um, it's really reflecting where people are hesitating, even considering getting into the market. And so how do we start to, to change that narrative? How do, and, and I think, you know, each one of us can participate in changing that narrative. A um, couple other things to note around that general sentiment of today's consumers is that next gen, I've been talking about this for a long time, but next gen feel that they can't trust experts in the industry. 46% uh, say that they um, trust lenders. So over half say that they don't trust lenders to help them make smart decisions about their future. Uh, and I think what's important to recognize here is that you know, on the flip side of that, if they do feel that they can trust you, then you feel like a, it feels like a really bright light in what is feeling like a dark space, you know, and that turns everything over to, uh, for instance, whenever I was getting a, um, buying a home, I felt lots of anxiety about it, but someone gave me a, um, total cost analysis and I felt so much safety it like relieved all of that anxiety. And I immediately text all my friends saying, I've got the most amazing loan officer ready for, you know, to send you their information. And um, so people want to refer you whenever they feel that they can trust you, but there's a general feeling of that distrust in the market. Um, and that distrust is growing outside of, in, in every industry, you know, it's not just the, the mortgage industry where, or real estate or housing, where we're feeling that distrust. Our institutional trust is at an all-time low in the U.S. Uh, that dropped below 50% for the first time last year um, and has declined 10 points since 2017. Um, so, and that you know, again, that's that's every industry. That's from media, healthcare, religion, government. Everywhere you look, consumers are feeling less and less safe around trusting experts. So, why that's important is that it's really crucial that trust is a huge part of your branding strategy. Um, anything you want to add to that, Dave? Yeah. I mean, part of when I, you know, I kicked this whole thing off with, if you can win with first time home buyers, you can win with everyone because that generation is the hardest to connect with and create trust with. So if you, if you can deliver an educational experience that delivers the transparency that they expect that leverages technology in a super simple, compelling way. Remember, they're living on TikTok. They're living on Instagram. They they use Zillow. You know, they're using some of the most powerful, um, cleanest, most responsive apps on planet Earth. So if you can connect with them, if you can, you know, go from distrust to trust with them, guys, you're going to crush it with every other segment 
of of consumers. So again, just making that case that I kicked the whole thing off with, like if we can win with this next generation and we can help give clarity, confidence, and inspire people into home ownership and overcoming the affordability challenges, like move up buyers, no problem. So, you know, where that leaves the consumer today, they're feeling that they can't trust the market. They feel homeownership is out of reach. There's instability in the housing market. They don't feel confident in their education and they are missing a lot of financial literacy education to give them that confidence. And they don't feel they can trust experts. So, you know, that's moved consumers into a space where they don't feel they have that outside support. And so they go inward saying, you know, I that's moved them into this new era of customer empowerment where they say, I can only trust myself to make smart decisions for the future. And yet, you know, while that feels like, okay, that's kind of okay that consumers are moving towards the space of like, I want to be equipped with this. Uh, but the problem is they don't feel that they can trust that outside support to give them that that new space. They feel alone. They feel unsupported. They're undereducated. They don't have what they need to be empowered as consumers. And so what I want to frame up as a general philosophy for us as, um, as professionals in the industry and how you can you know, move forward in this era of distrust is a kind of 2.0 around customer empowerment that's built on empathy, meaning you understand the consumer's distrust. You understand, uh, you know, where they're going for information. There's a general understanding of the market. Um, and then it's built on education. So from there, you are also someone who delivers that first home IQ quiz or education resources. And you're someone who's going to guide them through that process with a total cost analysis and things that help them feel supported in that customer empowerment space. And then ultimately you are engaging with them and their communities on a regular basis um, through TikTok and Instagram, like Dave was talking about, or, you know, choosing one of those locations to build your brand as someone who is empathetic, who is education focused, and you're able to deliver in a way that engages with them in their space and their communities. Oh, um, keep, keep I, rolling. Rolled. I thought you had a few more slides. Oh, I think I'm going to pass that over to you. Oh, well, you're right. I do have a few more slides. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, remember, we're practicing everybody. Yeah, <laughs> that's not how we'll do it in the in the next. Uh, wait, where are we? Here we go. OK, we'll so this next email. slide. <laughs> yeah, this next slide is something that I hear Dave talk a lot about, which is why I thought it was moving over to Dave. Um, but our focus at First Home IQ is to help to, as he mentioned earlier, to broaden and move that focus from uh, being, you know, someone moving into home ownership in their mid to late 30s down or er, downstream earlier in their lives, where they are actually having conversations and at least. Um, making plans earlier, um, where right now people feel that's totally out of reach. And, you know, it's been interesting because we just launched our curriculum in a school in Brooklyn, uh, where I'm hearing people consume the information. They're 18 years old about, and they're learning about from First Home IQ ambassadors and our curriculum about how to buy a home. And I was kind of thinking this is a little early for them to be getting this education. I was a little nervous about it, but it was so cool to see them, their minds work and ask questions around, you know, how could I buy a home earlier and how the, you know, they were, they were making plans and um, it was so inspiring to see what could that have looked like for you or for me or for our, you know, communities, if people had had that kind of education earlier it can change the game. I mean, I, I think there's just a, any one of us can think of a lot of stories around what that could look like. So here is a correct uh, uh, link. If you go take the quiz, um, this is, you know, again, a good way to just start that conversation. Um, we've given you that a lot, so I'm gonna move on. Um, but again, ultimately thinking about the power of uh, being obsessed with impact and this kind of customer empowerment 2.0, um, 
with First Home IQ, our focus is on empowering that next generation, um, delivering homeownership education and inspiration and resources to the next generation so that we can reverse these trends that we've talked about around distrust, financial illiter illiteracy, um, and build a, you know, a better future together. So, and to be obsessed with impact, we want to, we want to grow the industry's obsession. Uh, we want to turn mortgage professionals and real estate professionals collaborating together to be the first responders in this financial literacy crisis. So let's, let's start really getting tactical, like specific strategies so that you can create that wow experience for the, for the next generation. And you can take what you learn in this next little segment and apply it to, to move up buyers in all segments. So there's a concept that we talk a lot about at, at Trust Engine and, and a movement that we talk a lot about, about going from speed to lead, which, you know, for the multiple decades that I've been a leader in the mortgage business, speed to lead was like, you know, if you could be there first, you'd win. Um, and we believe that going forward for both mortgage and housing, speed to need. Like you got to get there first, but you got to get to the real needs of the consumer and help solve their problems. And and the the mortgage lender and the mortgage professional that gets to the need first wins. And when you look at some innovations from some other industries where they've really delivered on speed to need, I mean, one click used to be buying something online was not simple, easy, and fast. And the concept of just one clicking a purchase was was not even like a concept. It wasn't even like, oh, that'd be cool. Um, and and now Amazon, they they figured out a consumer need, they solved it with technology. You know, think of it as a, a marketing touch point that's delivered a real value for consumers that want to buy things. Apple Pay, same thing. I mean, guys, cash is practically dead now. And, and Zoom, you know, like everyone, you're on Zoom right now. We're watching this on Zoom. We live in a world where we're still connecting in person. Chris and I will see each other later on this afternoon. We'll be at an event uh, connecting live, but then there'll be a lot of follow-ups via Zoom. Like the world has changed. And some examples from our industry. There was a time when you couldn't even think about finding a home, shopping for a home, unless you had the help of a realtor and you had to like drive around the car with the Thomas guy figuring out how to, how to find the home. Now guys shopping for homes is home entertainment. It's in your mobile phone. People are watching TV and shopping for homes at the same time in 2015 during the Super Bowl, uh, the rocket went off and, and now every lender has a, you know, click button and consumers are filling out the app. Mortgage coach, and you know, we'll talk about what we've done and how we've turned the fee worksheet into a really transformational experience for folks. So, so the ultimate touch point in mortgage is the fee worksheet. It's like when you're quoting rates and and you're you're delivering um, your product. Here's your rates. Here's your payment. Here's your cash to close. I'm going to do a loan for you. Um, in 2000, or excuse me, in 1986, when I started in the mortgage business, like there was no fee worksheet. Like you literally took a handwritten app and, and this is how you delivered rates and fees to a consumer. And a few years, I mean, like just a couple of years after I got in the business, boom, you know, we didn't need to take a handwritten app. Uh, you know, we didn't type out applications and we had this fee worksheet and it was super innovative, uh, in 1989. Uh, well, guys, this is a fee worksheet from 2024. This is still how most mortgage professionals quote rates. Like, tell me, how how much different does this look than this? But think about how much different it is for consumers in America. So so if you want to win with first-time homebuyers and you want to really crush it, you have to deliver a transformational experience to consumers. You have to go beyond, here's your rate, here's your payment, here's your cash to close. And you need to show them how, you know what, look at owning versus renting in five years. You know, in fact, I'm going to move a few slides or, oh, we, we've got it, but I'm actually going to pull one of these slides down here real quick, or at least I'm going to try to. Um, guys, I mean... Think about this, going from this experience 
with a first time home buyer to literally showing that consumer, this is what home ownership could look like to you in five years. You know, I, Sean Herrera, who's going to be sharing from stage, I asked him to show um, how he is delivering transformational value. And it's like renting in column A, buying and owning. Look at the net worth over five years. Like if we're really going to help consumers understand, you know, the future of, you know, owning versus renting, we've got to make it simple and easy for them. So, so by the way, if you say you're obsessed with impact and this is how you deliver rates and fees to a first time home buyer, I debate that. I challenge you. Uh, someone that is fully executing and delivering an obsessed with impact experience to a consumer is delivering a transformational experience. And you know what they're also doing? They're delivering a first home IQ score. You know, they're giving them a little 10 minute test so that every time you get up to bat with a consumer, you're giving them value beyond the transaction. Chris, anything you want to, anywhere you want to take it from here? Just two things. One, I, um, I think it's important to recognize that that is the, you know, the TCA type of thing is the expectation of the consumer. I mean, or at least the expectation is not the uh, fee worksheet. I think whenever anyone has an experience like that, and I, I can't think of one right now, but I know that there's lots of frustrating consumer experiences where I'm like, what is happening? This is 2024. How is this the way that I have to communicate or send in my documents or whatever? You know, I mean, I definitely felt that way when I, I did do an application where it required me to um, go through that. And I, uh, I think it's important to recognize you don't want to be the person that is in giving a frustrating experience. Now, whenever they do get a TCA and things like that, that is such a wow experience. It's so above and beyond. But um, so you're going to, you know, you have the option of giving that. Um, but then the other thing I wanted to mention, and Dave, maybe this is something we could do for this next next presentation is I think it would be cool to show um, because that, that rent versus own was what got me into buying a home this time. You know, I bought a home in Oklahoma 10 years ago or whatever, but very different experience than living in LA. And I think, you know, looking at that, what it would look like today, what my net worth would be compared to if I continued renting um, might be a cool, you know, analysis, but yeah, anyway. And, yeah. And without getting into Kristen's personal information, I mean, she had saved some real money and she was looking at like, Hey, I have that money invested. She's smart investor. And she kind of knew what that net worth would look like in five years and by saying, hey, I could take some of that money, keep it to work in the market. I could take some of that money, put me into real estate and and then look at what things. And, and, and she was concerned, like, I don't know if I want to live in L.A. and this lifestyle forever. So she really cared about like, hey, what does the next three years look like? What does the next five years look like? And that clarity gave her the confidence. What was it like four years ago that you bought a place in L.A.? Was yeah, it? yeah. Four, four years, years ago. ago. Yeah. And, you know, it'd be interesting to look at that total cost analysis for years and compare to what you really achieved uh, from a personal financial growth perspective. So anyways, yeah. well, let's let's walk them through some of the other ways in which, again, we're all we're obsessed with impact. We want to help you be obsessed with the impact in a way that helps you win with first time home buyers, but also in a way that helps you wow and win with anyone and everyone so you want to go back into slide yeah. sharing mode all right cool um so yeah i'm going to share some of the slides that um kind of talk about some of the strategies that our ambassadors are using to share their obsession with impact and leverage that in a way that that is helping them you know have impact in their communities as well as help them generate more business and, um, you know, one of those ways is very obvious, but, and we've talked about this, but creating social media content and creating short, engaging videos. Um, you know, I've, the there were lots of slides in, in our 2024 Next Gen Home Buyer Report where we talk about how video is the top way to engage consumers. Um, in fact, even, and one of the the research points was that people where people go for information about personal finance was number one, friends and family makes sense. Um, but very close. Number two was video content. <laughs> 
So this is uh, this is a really interesting trend where it's almost the same as going to a friend or trusted friend or family member. Um, so, you know, Sean Herrero is using it. There's an example here of him using our content. Uh, we share First Home IQ um, social media content that you can brand yourself well, as ambassadors. And, um, and he creates educational content in lots of different ways, but um, he was sharing something that was over our content. And I think it's important to not just share a static post or a research point or whatever, but that you are personally sharing some kind of, you know, perspective. And, um, oh, here we go. Okay. I didn't realize I put the stat in here. So um, here's the example video, again, really close to friends and family uh, as a place where they go for personal financial information. So just really interesting to see, again, that's above financial advisors, above online articles, um, but, but video content is where people feel that they can trust that information. So um, another one of our um, our influencer partners, what's, uh, his handle is what's a mortgage. Min Nguyen is, um, does some really great content as well. And, um, some examples of that, you can leverage existing content like the, that example from Sean, you could share your expertise in some way, um, just speaking to things that are really normal for you, you know, and, um, this example from Min is, um, he's sharing a specific program, and so like new news that might be out around a down payment assistance program or or even defining terms or, you know, in a way that's engaging, but but putting your voice to someone that's an expert in the market is an amazing way to build trust and um, and really be able to help people understand it, it feels more tangible or accessible for people that follow you. Yeah, and by, by the way, guys, he this man is followed by 308,000 followers. I mean, he I think he is the the top mortgage influencer. So he's someone that, you know, if you are obsessed with impact and you want to, you know, win at the highest level, you got to follow these folks. You got to learn from these folks. The people that we're showcasing in these slides are, they're obsessed with impact. Like the results that they have, prove it, the way that they operate, the habits that they have, prove it. They're, they're, these are obsessed with impact leaders. So make sure you follow um, Ming, make sure you follow Sean. Um, all the folks that Kristen is calling out are people that, you know, you wanna, you wanna crush it this year, follow these folks on all their social media channels. Yeah, and use them as examples, just like, do what they're doing in your own way. You know, I mean, I think that's a, a great way to get started. Um, and then also thinking about presentations. And I know a webinar or a live event can feel difficult to do, or it's like time consuming, but, um, you know, first of all, we, we have at least one presentation that's available for free for anybody. Uh, it's called Money Matters and it's basic financial literacy. Ambassadors have access to a bunch of other presentations. Um, but I think, you know, whatever you can do to show people, here's some accessible information, you're taking it to the next level from engaging short video content to hear something more robust and in depth to help carry you through this process and get give you more information, empowering you as a consumer. Um, so, you know, one of our um, ambassadors, just to share with you kind of a creative idea, it doesn't always have to be like a first time home buyer presentation. Um, Kayla uh, partnered with some other community members and did a health is wealth event, or actually we're, we're doing it in a few days. And, um, and it's a really cool concept where you're partnering with other organizations, other people in the community to be able to reach more people. Um, so, you know, you can think outside the box from just doing a first time homebuyer presentation or advertising a webinar to doing something in partnership with even a totally different industry. Uh, but community, partner with other community leaders, um, get creative around the way that you're reaching them, uh, and then leveraging nonprofit partnerships like First Home IQ or other organizations in your community is a great, great way to build trust because um, there's there's more trust there versus it feeling like a solicitation. Um, and again, with consumers being really 
nervous and skeptical, that that's helpful in kind of getting your foot in the door. Um, and then another thing I'll mention, you know, this of course falls really well in line with the mortgage coach approach, but um, personalized advice, making sure that you are, are giving people information in a way that feels that accessible for them. So, um, you know, Christian Lopez is a good example of someone who shares information online and then guides people through a process. Um, and even, you know, using the first home IQ quiz as a way to deliver personalized advice is, is an approach and an approach. So you're giving them information, it's giving them their results. And then a lot of our ambassadors are following up with a, like they get emailed the results of anyone that takes their quiz. So then they can follow up with a conversation saying, hey, I saw you got these questions wrong. Let's talk about what information you might be missing here. And it sets them up as a way for, again, the consumer to feel empowered and you to be that trusted guide through the process. So that's kind of one way that you can add to that personalized advice. Um, anything you'd add to that, Dave? That yeah, no, one? let's let's go to the next slide. And for anyone that wants to become, oh, you used a different one. Here, let me let me grab the slides from you real quick. Here, because I'm showing. Yeah. So for anyone who wants to become a, a first home IQ ambassador. Uh, here's a place to go. You can share your screen over that. We'll also put a link down below. Um, you know, and this is for folks that really want to commit time every month to to this this strategy um, of winning with first time home buyers. You know, leaning into Gen Z, and and want to commit money to to do it. You know, you can either commit um, two hundred auto, five hundred, or a hundred dollars per file with a fifth. $500 deposit. So for anyone that wants to do that, um, we'll put a link down below and hopefully you, you took a, a shot of that. I do want to play um, a video of Jeremy 4CA. Where did it go? Hang on. It's that next slide actually that you had up. Will, will it play the video? It's linked to the, or it should be linked. Yeah, it's linked to the video. Okay. So you can like click on that. Hang on, let me uh, let me do it this way because on Zoom, I want to make sure that the sound works. So, um, so guys, this is a a post from I don't know several weeks ago, maybe maybe even a couple months ago with Jeremy on on Instagram. But check out what Jeremy has to say here. Before First Home IQ, a nonprofit organization that I am super honored to be one of the. OG original ambassadors of to bring to the market. This is a nonprofit that wants to solve fiscal literacy problems and we're focusing on education in high schools as well as colleges so that people can understand fiscally how to be responsible, how to take care of themselves, how to build wealth, how to buy real estate, and just how to create um, a great relationship with money and have it work for you rather than against you. So be on the lookout for more information coming up. You can check out the link uh, in my bio from Housing Wire with the announcement and learn more about the program and what it's about. Uh, it's a great nonprofit that we're dedicating $100 on each loan that we close moving forward towards more curriculum development, uh, counselors, etc. So if you want to learn more about this amazing nonprofit and how Hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, All right. Guys, so, guys, so Chris and I got a few more ideas to share around this. A couple more tactics, but anything else you want to share on your on your part? I just wanted to share a little bit around like leading with the. Actually, I'll just share my screen real quick. Um, to touch on a couple points here. Um, one was you know as you're thinking about how you partner with nonprofits, sharing that information is important again to building trust and how you can, um, you know, share it. Like this is an example from JJ Mazo post he shared on Instagram and, and Facebook, um, but leading with cause marketing materials, building your brand as someone who does give back, that's helpful to not only having an impact, but also leveraging that impact. Um, and, you know, Joe Soto is one of our ambassadors who volunteered at one of our schools and um, and then sharing that that on Instagram and saying like it, it was amazing to be able to volunteer here and 
um, again, like you do the impact, share that. And, and then also, and you make connections through that and also share that on social media. So I just wanted to, to share just a little bit about, you know, it's important to, to leverage that in your brand as well. Beautiful. So, uh, all right, got a couple more ideas. And again, this is the, the check, the obsessed with impact checklist, we're going to have to add, um, deliver a mortgage coach experience to every consumer. But this this is the checklist, guys. And uh, we just started selling yesterday the Modern Mortgage and Modern Real Estate Summit. It's March 28th. Virtual tickets are only um, $100. And and then, of course, they'll, they'll be, we've got 50 spots left uh, for people that want to be there live. It's the room only fits 65 people. So, Go to the website, um, modernmortgagesummit.com, sign up today. Um, but I want to I want to just close out on some very specific tactics, very specific strategies. You know, first is is just make sure that everyone watching this, you know how to do a rent versus own analysis. And uh, if you don't know how to do this, you could go to our um, trustengine.com 10x webpage and and um, you know, there's videos how to do it. There's classes to do it. Like if you watch this debrief on how Sean Herrera presented to 165 realtors, you, know, you not only will you see how he is, um, you know, creating an individual rent versus own for individual clients, you'll see how he's presenting that just on stage to, you know, 100 plus realtors. Uh, so make sure you're doing that. And then remember earlier, I said that if you can win with first time home buyers, you can win with everyone. Like this is a, not a Gen Z, but this was an active duty Marine who who got a mortgage coach experience. And he said, the time you spent with me explaining my scenarios with mortgage coach you put together makes me want to find the last two lenders I worked with and punch them in the face. So I, I bring up that testimonial. One, it's my favorite. Uh, but two, it just makes the point of that when you're obsessed with impact and you go beyond the typical experience for a consumer, like you win with every market segment. Um, so another speed to need strategy to get to first home home buyers is we got to get to them fast. We got to get to them sooner. So I want to share a strategy of how you can leverage your database to get to first home first time home buyers fast. So so one, just monitoring your database is not enough anymore. Like lots of people in Sales Boomerang, which is part of Trust Engine, you know, has triggers. But you know the challenge with these triggers is they're late. These are people that are in the market. You know, every one of the trigger alerts, whether someone's running a credit report and cheating on you, it's it's in the market and it's late. You know, so that's that's one challenge. And two, it's not predictive enough to help you get to first time home buyers faster. First of all, most people in mortgage are waiting for first time home buyers to call them and say, hey, I, I want to see if I qualify. Um, they're not leaning in. You know, you, you, you know, every consumer that you work with that you've done a loan for that has kids, you know, that are, you know, six, north of 16, you should be leaning into that family and saying, hey, what's your plan to help your kids achieve home ownership? Let me share some some house hacking strategies of how you could help um, the kids in your house. You could pay through for college by either buying a duplex, triplex or buying a three bedroom house and renting out bedrooms. So we've got to be more predictive and anticipate the needs of the consumer. It's one of the things we help you do at Trust Engine with our borrower intelligence platform is we really help you get predictive. Um, next um, month, we're rolling out a new mobile app uh, that will not only show you like, hey, here are the opportunities in your database, but it's creating a total cost analysis. It's giving you a script of what to say to that consumer. It's giving you a snapshot of what the opportunity is. So we're very committed, guys. You know, hopefully you're getting from this session that Chris and I put up, put together. One, we're obsessed with impact. You know, we have our for-profit businesses. Uh, make sure you guys hire Kristen to speak at your next sales rally. Go to kristenmesserly.com. And then we have our for-profit, our mission, First Home IQ. We hope um, anyone listen to this is a little more obsessed with impact and um, you'll lead into these. So Chris, anything else you want to share before we open it up for some Q and a you're on mute. 
I always do that. Okay. Um, just super quickly, I'll run through a couple slides on the ambassador program. Um, and then, by the way, guys, I will get to your question. So, Michael Rode, uh, thank you for your comment. I got, I do have a comment on that, by the way. And uh, anybody put questions in, and Kristen and I will get those, get to those. So, put them in chat, and also give us a quick reaction. How are you liking the the overall presentation so far? Just a little pulse check from everyone. All right, Kristen. Well, cool. um, just. You know, the ambassador program is about turning loan officers and real estate agents into first responders of the financial literacy crisis. So if you are interested in participating there, um, you can go to firsthomeiq.com slash ambassador and find out more information or, of course, send me a message. Um, a couple things to know about the program. Uh, we do provide educational presentations and kits around those presentations to help you market them. Um, so there's marketing resources and social media content, including um, things that like captions and it's all customizable in Canva released on a weekly basis. So we have a big library of content there for our ambassadors to help share this on social media, make it their own, create video content from it, um, all of that. And then of course, we just have a really great community as well, where we're constantly giving new resources and sharing those with each other. Um, we have monthly strategy calls, so if you're interested in learning more, you can go to our website or you can use this QR code um, and we have options, different donation options to participate on the financial side. And then, of course, on the um, impact side where we ask people to share the quiz and participate in the community. Um, so that was all I wanted to share just really briefly on the ambassador program. All right. So closing thought for me and then I'll hit any of the questions that are in chat. Um, and this this comes from uh, my interview with Jonathan Roach, who has completed 27 consecutive Boston marathons, 12 Ironmans. You know, he's currently the um, performance coach for Kentucky, the D1 basketball team. That's a top 20 rated team and absolutely could be in the final four and win a national championship. This came from him a few weeks ago. Um, in his closing thought, he said, you know what? We all have eight to 12 pivotal moments in our life. You know, um, definitely getting into the mortgage business was a pivotal moment for me. You know, um, my wife, you know, getting married to Kelly Savage 32 years ago was a, was a pivotal moment. But all of those pivotal moments wouldn't have happened without countless tiny moments. Like little things that, led up to that pivotal moment, you know, like getting in the mortgage business. I met Mel Samick, my first entrepreneur at a happy hour. He drove a Mercedes and paid for drinks for everyone. And I'm like, dude, what's this guy do? But I called him up the next day and said, bro, I want to come by, you know, I want to learn what you do. So I had the courage to call him, you know, the first date with my wife, you know, I had the courage to ask her out on a date. I had the courage to keep coming back. And, and those all led to pivotal moments. And so I'll, I'll leave you with the thought, guys, like truly this session could be a tiny moment that leads to a pivotal moment. You know, like I do believe that slide I showed at the very beginning where like my advice makes a difference. That was a defining moment in my life. That was not a tiny moment, you know, like coming up with that concept, paying an ad agency, like that's a picture from an ad agency that I paid to create a personal brochure. I think it cost me like 25 grand. And, and then because I went on this, this like that's my brand, that's what I'm all about, that led to the creation of Mortgage Coach, which again was a pivotal moment that led to financial freedom. So I just want to push everyone, like I, I journaled after I heard Jonathan say it, I wrote down like all the pivotal moments in my life. And then I wrote down some of the tiny moments that led to those moments. Hopefully this session has created one of those tiny moments and everybody that Kristen and I touch with this message will become obsessed with impact and, and go beyond just doing loans, go beyond selling homes. Like let's like, if we all come together, we can make a dent in financial literacy in America and we can actually move the home ownership rate up. It's been good doing nothing but go down for several years. The age of first-time home buyers is doing nothing but going up. But if we all band together as an industry, we can uh, 
kind of move those macroeconomic numbers. So, Kristen, any other closing thoughts before we answer some of these questions? I don't want to add anything to that. I am so inspired by what you said. I think, you know, we can all create those small moments by just passing this on. And, and I think there are, there's a lot of feelings of being uncomfortable when you are moving into something new or, you know, trying to share education content or getting on social media, all of that um, can feel, or, you know, working on delivering a TCA uh, that's uncomfortable at first. And I think that the more that you, are able to lean into that, seeing that, that, you know, leading with your heart and with impact, you're going to see impact in your, your business and all of these other ways. So I guess I am adding to that, but I just loved what you said. All right. So, so Michael, I am, Michael wrote, I love Jeremy, but this trend of many of the professionals doing a video with the hat forwards or backwards and a t-shirt thing uh, is, is rubbing me the wrong way. So so it's funny you, you said that. And Brian Hale, I interviewed Brian Hale, absolute legend in the industry, you know, been the CEO of a number of big mortgage companies. Um, God, there's probably, there's no leader in the mortgage business where more CEOs and executives in the mortgage business worked for this guy. He said something similar, and I didn't get to say this to him, but here's here's what I'm going to, here's what's on my heart, Michael, when you say that. First of all, I can tell you right now that Sean Herrero gets energy from being who he is, you know, wearing his hat, however he wants it, front or back, you know, having whatever tattoos he wants, wherever he wants it. Like it helps him be his most authentic self. And and not everybody's going to do business with Sean Herrero. Not everybody's going to do business with Jeremy Forcier, but if it gives them energy to be their authentic self, and by the way, there does have to be people that want to do business with them. Like if you are showing up in the market a certain way and you're not getting a lot of leads, you're not connecting with people, like maybe you need to change. But right now I would just push you, Michael, like it's cool that it rubs you the wrong way. But I also want everyone listening to this, everyone reading this, like the path forward in the mortgage business and especially to win with the next generation, it's being your authentic self. Um, I don't think you need to wear your hat on backwards to win with the next generation, but I think everyone in the industry needs to be whatever that authentic self that fires you up, that makes you love your job more, that makes you love the people that you talk to more, like do more of that. Uh, Krista, anything you want to add to that or say? And thank you, Michael, for sharing that, by the yeah, way. I really no, appreciate I it, bro. I love the conversation around this because um, I, I think what works today is who you being yourself. So whatever that looks like, if it's a suit, be that, you know, if it's, you know, you feel most comfortable being more on the professional side, do that, but it, it's whatever feels authentic to you. And, and, and then another thought is like, do video, you know, like, like that is one of those things where, um, that, that is how people are doing life. That is pe how people are learning. Uh, there's a lot of different types of videos. Like, like you won't see me making funny videos on TikTok. Uh, like, that's just not my brand. It's not what I feel comfortable doing. But will you see me making videos on YouTube? Uh, showing curiosity, interviewing people? Absolutely. But find your video strategy, find your platform, find something that's uniquely yours. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to change this, but, you know, you see a lot of people doing videos where it's just them, you know, kind of sharing their takes, sharing their advice. Um, I've thought about doing that every year for about three years. And I'm like, you know what, that, that, that sucks energy for me. Like interviewing people gives me energy, just sharing like my, my opinion. Um, it's hard. It, it sucks energy from me. So I'm, I'm not doing it. Uh, you see, so find your unique way of doing things. So guys, we are at the top of the hour. Kristen Messerly, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks everybody for being here. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, let us know what you thought as you leave. Give us a little reaction. And uh, for anyone going to Momentum Builder, we'll see you. And hopefully we also have a lot of you guys sign up for the Modern Mortgage Summit. Take care, everybody. This is a wrap.